Good morning, and thanks for tuning in to Notations of a Nappy Girl, episode 21. Today, let's see, we shall talk about family and how to build those relationships. Because the funny thing about family is you can't pick them. You're pretty much born into them. You're stuck with them. And to some degree, you have to learn how to deal with them effectively. Now, the entire Notations of a Nappy Girl series has honestly been based upon self-enrichment, self-motivation, and building effective relationships, be it work, family, or um, relationship, kind of love. I'll put it like that. Um, I am very big on having all aspects of your life flow together and flow effectively. If you have all those relationships in your life and they're flowing effectively, then you as an individual will flow more effectively. So here's the thing. We can't pick our parents. We can't pick our siblings, our cousins, none of that. The only thing in life you can pick are your friends. So people say, well, am I supposed to be friends with my family? Of course you're supposed to be friends with your family. Um, the key to being friends with your family is recognizing, acknowledging, and accepting each one of them for who they are. Now, some people really don't have families. They have um, adopted families, meaning they grew up without that central unit, <clears throat> so to speak. So then they have people who they've encountered in their life who they've kind of adopted as family members. And that's completely acceptable. It makes sense. We were not bred as human beings to be alone. We were made to desire and seek out companionship. And you can go way back to the Bible and see that any any religious um, format will show that, that we were not made or created or put here, depending on what religion you go with, to be by ourselves. So effective relationships are definitely necessary for our individual survival. Here's the key. With your parents, they are who they are. You arrived in their life when you got here, and you can't change who they are. You can't change how they feel about you, how they felt about your conception, your arrival, what have you. There's a lot of things that go into play in dealing with parents. Um, your siblings, mm -mm. you ain't gonna like them half the time. And it's okay, because especially if you grew up in the same household, you pretty much grew up vying for your parents' attention against your siblings. So it was always that effort to one-up. And I can say that because I have been blessed with a humongous extended family, and so is my son. And I think this is awesome, um, because it does give you uh, that foundation for dealing with other people. Me, myself, I had five other siblings in the house with me. Plus one, two, three, three siblings that did not live in the home um, from different marriages and things like that. Uh, and I think it's great. I'm close to all of them. I know them all. I know their children. I know their spouses. Um, I follow them and stalk them on Facebook. It's what I do. We may not live up to our family members' expectations. We as individuals, we have shortcomings. Some of us lie. Some of us cheat. Some of us steal. Some of us have had to deal with addiction and overcoming that. Some of us have a mountain of financial woes, troubled kids of our own, what have you. And all these components in our lives tend to affect how our siblings and our parents and everybody else treats us. Here's the thing. Accept everybody for who they are. You know, if your brother has, you know, a crazy wife, hey, that's his wife. If your sister has an, you know, as long as it's not something that's detrimental to their health. Now, if they have an abusive spouse or they're abusive or they're abusing their children, then yes, as a sibling, you have every right or cousin or a spouse, you know, you have every right to step in and say, hey, this is not conducive to a healthy lifestyle. Everybody's not going to want to hear that. But just because you don't like who they're dating or anything like that, if they're not in any imminent danger, let it go. Step back. Remember the episode of the Cosby show where he told Elvin just, we have to do that with our friends and family members. We have passions that other people may not share. And we cannot get so worked up to the point where we're in a frenzy or we've made ourselves sick or we start stop dealing with somebody simply because we don't like their life. Now, me personally, 
I'm, I'm not big on drug usage. So if I have a family member, which I don't currently, if I, um, if I have a family member who's battling with addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs, I'd step in and try to get them some help and try to help them see why they need help, but I can't make them. So I'd have to love them from a distance because I can't be within that realm and grow as an individual. I love them none, no less. I would never not love them. I just possibly couldn't be around them. But I'd still support any endeavors that they have for getting themselves better. Anything outside of that, I'm hands off. It's the same thing, people. You know, you got family members who will talk about you like a dog. You have family members who will sleep with your partner. You have family members who will do other stuff that may just hurt you. Hey, deal with it. It happens. But the biggest part of it all is to talk. Um, and I always use myself as an example because I don't like speaking on other people's business via these videos. So using myself as an example, my family is scattered all over because we all do something different. We all have our own lives out of, let's see, six, seven, eight. out of eight other siblings, I am the only one that has never been married. Um, I am the only one, well, with the exception of one who only has one child. I do have a sister who has none. Um, so we all do stuff differently. Um, I have a plethora of nieces and nephews ranging in age from, I want to say, I want to say the youngest is like six or seven. The oldest ones just made 22 this year. So it's spread out and I love it. Um, it's just, it's all in how you process. You know, I love to hear my son talk about the fact that he has one, two, three, like four grandmas. I like the fact that depending on whose house we're at for the holidays, the ethnicities are so mixed. I mean, we have Filipino, we have Puerto Rican, we have Mexican, we have African American. It's everybody is in for the party, you know, and that's okay. But in building effective relationships, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies, and building effective relationships, we have to remember what is most important. Um, and looking at my life, my son's happiness is most important. So for me, it is important for me to be friends with his stepmother. It is important for me to embrace his siblings from his dad's marriage. And it, it just makes sense. People don't understand it. But it is what it is. You know, when he went on prom, you know, his dad was there. His stepmom was there. His brothers and sisters were there. My mom was there. My sisters, my best friend. I'm all about love. And <clears throat> if you can find love in a bunch of different circles, hey, that's more love for you. Now, we have those family members who are what we call leeches, who just only call when they need something or only check in when their stuff is not in order, guess what? You still got to love them too. Love them from a distance. If you can't help them, don't help them. If you can, by all means, do so. It'll come back to you. May not when you expect it, but it'll come back to you. So that's my thing for today. Effectively dealing with family. When you have negative family members, Keep them at an arm's length, just like you do negative associates and negative friends. It is what it is, but we can't pick them. And like my dad used to always say, you can't pick your family, damn, and you can't kill them all. So, and, and you can't, don't kill them all, just don't do it. But what he meant by that in a very military way of saying it is that you're stuck with them for life. So make the best of it, just like anything else in your life. Keep flowing, keep growing. And embrace and accept everybody as an individual because that's the same thing you expect in return. So that's my message for today. And there's that phone. So peace and blessings, people.